My name is Jen Marino, and I work in medical and scientific affairs for Roche Diagnostics. February is American Heart Month, and today I'd like to share with you information on high-sensitive troponin assays. I'd like to review the definition of a high-sensitive troponin assay, discuss the clinical benefits, and finally review the universal definition of myocardial infarction consensus in regards to high-sensitive troponin. The International Federation of Clinical Chemistry, or IFCC, has released consensus guidelines as to what a high-sensitive troponin assay is. First, it states that the 99th percentile should be reported as whole numbers in nanograms per liter versus the contemporary troponin assays being reported in nanograms per milliliter. This is to help reduce the risk of errors with using decimal points. Now the troponin test should be measured at the 99th percentile with an analytical imprecision of less than 10%. This means if you were to run the same sample repeatedly, you should obtain a result with a less than 10% change. The test should also be able to measure troponin above the limit of detection in greater than 50% of healthy subjects. Therefore, the sensitivity is enhanced to allow a greater opportunity to detect myocardial injury. The clinical benefit of a high sensitive troponin assay is to shorten the time to diagnosis. It can also identify more myocardial infarctions and ultimately identify them earlier. Now an earlier decision to diagnose can result in ruling out low risk patients and reducing the length of stay in the emergency department. It also results in a more rapid delivery of therapy by diagnosing MI sooner. It can avoid unnecessary admissions. So therefore, by implementing a high sensitive troponin assay, along with a risk score, clinical acumen, and an EKG assessment can ultimately improve patient care. Now I'd like to review what the fourth universal definition of MI recommends in regards to a high sensitive troponin assay. One, the recommended cutoff is the 99th percentile. This is the level that identifies the presence of myocardial injury. But keep in mind there are a number of conditions that cause myocardial injury beyond an MI. Two, sex specific cutoffs are recommended. The reason is women tend to have smaller myocardial mass and therefore have lower troponin levels. Now the fourth universal definition of MI also recommends serial testing with a high sensitive troponin assay. The first measurement should be at zero hours and repeated earlier than three to six hours. It also states the requirements to diagnose an MI, which are one, to have at least one value greater than the 99th percentile. Again, this signifies myocardial injury. Two, you need to see a rise and or a fall of the high sensitive troponin. Three, you need to have evidence of myocardial ischemia, such as clinical symptoms, EKG changes, or imaging evidence. By obtaining serial measurements and calculating the difference between serial measurements will help differentiate if the myocardial injury is due to a chronic or an acute condition. Now the fourth universal definition of MI states that a single sample rule out strategy using a low value and in many cases it's the limit of detection of the assay has a high sensitivity for myocardial injury and a high negative predictive value to exclude MI. But caution, the strategy should not be used in those who present early, such as less than two hours after the onset of symptoms. Now studies have indicated that the single sample approach provides optimal sensitivity and negative predictive value in patients who are low risk with a normal EKG. And it's important for clinicians to consider other causes of myocardial injury when one, using a rapid rule in or rule out algorithm, 
Two, when patients have a troponin value greater than the 99th percentile with or without dynamic changes. And three, in the absence of clinical evidence of ischemia. So in conclusion, by implementing a high sensitive troponin assay, along with a risk score, clinical acumen, and an EKG assessment can ultimately identify MIs earlier, rule out low-risk patients earlier, and overall improve patient care. I'd like to thank you for listening to February's Heart Month edition of Care to Be Aware, Community Access to Roche Education. Thank you.